Hello and welcome to Dad Got This, where we answer the tough questions like, can you make a double-double animal style in and out burger at home? And why shouldn't you buy a burger in Athens? That one's easy, because it's too greasy. I happen to have a Monument Denali 605 Pro, and it's got this cool grillware system built into the grill grates with a circular grate that you can swap out for different items. You have a crisscross grate, Currently, it's just the normal grate that matches the grill grates. You've got a pizza stone and a flat top with a grid top and a full flat top. This is what we're gonna use today. We'll make videos on these later. While we open this up, we'll talk about what we're doing. I love In-N-Out burgers. In my Five Guys Burger video, I mentioned I kind of prefer an In-N-Out burger, so I don't know why I didn't make a In-N-Out burger First, let's take a look at our flat top. Ooh, on this side, it's flat. On this side, it's kind of ribbed. So I guess you could kind of like do like grilling type stuff if you want sear marks. Me, I always like a flat surface. Searing a steak, flat, more surface area touching the food. For burgers, this guy's gonna be awesome. So this is what's gonna go in my grill when it stops raining. In my research for how to do this, I decided to follow Kenji Alt Lopez from Serious Eats Recipe. He went crazy in depth on how to create this burger. He had frozen ones shipped to him, fresh ones shipped to him. He put in so much work. I'm gonna link down to his recipe in the description below. So that's what we're gonna follow. To do it, we need this. Why do we need a mixer? Because we need to grind our own beef. You don't need to, but it's just Better. Let me get my beef. Apparently, In N Out uses 100% chuck. So, I got myself a chuck roast. I was shocked at how much chuck roast is these days. Because that is much too much money. I thought chuck roast was supposed to be a cheaper cut of meat. It's not. Or at least it's not anymore. You're gonna need two ounces of ground chuck per patty. Two patties per burger, four ounces. So, you do the math. Math! However many you're trying to make, that's how much you need. We're shooting for an 80-20 mix, so try to get the fattiest chuck steak you can. Mine wasn't very fatty, but thankfully, I keep beef tallow in the house so we can add some fat. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna chunk it up to make it easier to go in the grinder, and then we're gonna freeze it for about an hour. When you freeze it, it grinds a little easier. We're also gonna freeze the grinder attachments if you wanna know more about the grinder I'm using with my mixer, I did a video where I kinda of went more in depth on it. I'll link that in the description. For now, let's get this chunked up. I'm just gonna stick mine in a Ziploc bag. We are not gonna season this or anything. If you season your ground beef before it's ground or while it's ground, you can get kinda of gummy ground beef. You really just need to season the outside. Beef tallow, if you wanna know how to make it, Check out my latest brisket video. We are gonna put in a nice chunk. We're gonna let it freeze. That should be good. That should be about 20% fat to the weight of the meat. I didn't weigh it, but it should be close. If you say so. I'm gonna go stick this and all the grinder parts in a freezer. My first experience with In-N-Out Burger was, I used to travel a lot back in the day for work. I worked in the car show industry for a while. And I used to go from city to city, and anytime I got to go over to California, everybody's like, you gotta try in and out burger, you gotta try in and out burger, and so they finally took me, and I was hooked. They are just a great burger. So we just wanna slice our onions nice and thin. These are gonna cook down quite a bit. One onion should be good, though. Next up on the list is the animal-style sauce. For that, we need three tablespoons of mayonnaise. I happen to have Japanese mayo in the house, which I love. So I will use some Japanese mayo. We need a tablespoon of ketchup. Two teaspoons of sweet pickle relish. One half teaspoon of white sugar. And one half teaspoon of distilled white vinegar. And now we just mix this up. Animal style sauce. For the onions, I would normally do this outside on the side burn on the grill, but it's still kind of raining out there and I'd like to stay dry. So let's do the onions in here. We're gonna take a pan, put it over high heat. 
We're gonna let this pan come up to heat and start to shimmer, maybe a tiny bit of smoke. Onions. Half a teaspoon of salt. After you start them, drop it down to medium low. It's gonna kind of cook these, tossing them every once in a while for about 15 minutes until they're nicely browned. It's been about eight or nine minutes. We're getting browning. We're not there yet. We are almost there. We got nice browning on most of this. They're looking a little dry. It's time to start adding water. We're gonna add one tablespoon of water at a time. And you just keep doing this until it cooks and evaporates and they get all nice and jammy. Look who's here. What do you mean he? These are caramelized onions that go on some of the burgers. Probably not your burger. I do not like onions. I want cheese, lettuce, and pickles. And special sauce. special sauce. You gotta have special sauce. Secret sauce. These are looking good. These are almost done. Watch out, that pan is hot, okay? <laughs> These are basically done, and I think it's time to grind our beef. Yay. Time to grind our beef. Nice medium dye. It's already assembled. We're gonna go ahead and take this. And if I remember correctly, it goes right in there. This guy goes in like that. We got that guy right there. And let's grab some beef. And at this point, this is where everything went wrong. I totally gummed up this grinder. I had to take the entire grinder apart, clean off a bunch of stuff, put it back together. It was a real mess. Upon further inspection of the meat, I realized I still had silver skin kind of woven throughout the whole bit of meat. So I had to go and try to cut away as much of that as possible. I should have been much cleaner in my trim of my chuck steak and not worried about trying to save what I thought was fat and just add my fat in later. Once I made those adjustments, I was able to get a pretty good clean grind out of this, or at least as best as I could do. Here I was blaming the equipment. I think it was me. I wasn't running it at fast enough speed, and I didn't have all the silver skin gone. Once I got rid of that silver skin, she ground up pretty nice. I'm going to weigh these out into two ounce balls. That's right on. That is a two ouncer. We need two of those per burger. I'm only making one double-double and a couple of singles for the rest of the family. So four patties will do it for me for now. Time for some cleanup, and then we wait for dinner time to finish this off. It is a new day. The sun is shining, and I can make some burgers. First thing we need to do is swap out the insert. So we're gonna go ahead and take this one and put it in place of that one. Very difficult. That sounds hard. Now, it's just time to turn on our grill. We'll only turn on the burners over on this side because that's all we care about. We'll close this down for a little bit and let it preheat. Let's check how hot this guy is. 770 degrees. I think we're ready to burger. Because my onions are cold, I'm gonna take a little bit of oil. Ooh, ooh, that is hot. That might be too hot. Let's turn it down a little bit. Take our buns, just put them in here to warm up a little bit. I gotta put on a high heat glove. I can't get my hand into that area without pain. I froze my hamburger meat a little bit because it was crumbling when I tried this the other day. So I thought slightly frozen might be good.
However, they're too frozen. pepper, a little bit of salt, now here's where the real trick comes in, you mustard the second side, and you mustard griddle it. This is some thick cut deli yellow cheese. You get it at the deli, you get it nice and thick. On this burger here, go our onions, like that. Our second mustard grilled patty goes right on top. And then the non-mustard grilled is for the kiddo. And there you have a homemade in and out double double animal style. Now to assemble the kiddo's burger. The kiddo only like lettuce, sauce, and pickles. Dad's burger, kiddo's burger. You've had this because we ate these last night, but go ahead and give your burger a try. Eat it over the cutting board because it's drippy. Good? How does it compare to the other burgers that I've made? Do you like this style, Five Guys style, the thick smoked burgers? I guess we need to make a trip to LA or this, the West Coast so the kiddo can try a real In-N-Out burger. Let me try mine. Brings me back to my traveling days. I would say that the insert flat top was awesome. That thing got super hot, almost too hot. So if you have a Monument 605 Pro, get the grill inserts. Those are awesome. I'll do uh, tests of the other ones, the Pizza Stone and everything in future videos. So make sure you are subscribed. I want to say thank you to all of our members. You guys are the best. I want to thank Roosevelt for providing all my clothing. Love these shirts. RSVLTS.com. Well, that only leaves one question to answer. What did the hamburger say to the hot dog? You're on a roll. Yeah. That's going to do it. Dad may tell horrible dad jokes, make really good burgers, but there's one thing dad will never do. Dad Got This, so that's it. Bye. This episode of Dad Got This was brought to you by our producers. Thank you very much.